I've been in a slump. At first I was naive, thinking it would go away if I just told myself to just push through it. But it only kept growing, getting worse and worse, being constantly overwhelmed, until I just burnt out and everything just stopped. But it's in times of stagnation that we learn what needs to change. This week's story is about how a book helped me rediscover my creativity and the importance of hobbies. About how I've been influenced to change the way I create, consume, and share in 2024. Moving away from the things that I've internalized from the past three and a half years of creating content. And more about how I'm investing more into my creativities and hobbies. So welcome besties to my very first vlog of 2024. Let's make a quick cuppa and have a chat. Oh. So, I think to understand where I'm at now, I think it's important to understand what happened last year. <sighs> this is really good tea. So, about a year ago, I left my master's degree and became a full-time content creator, which was a huge moment for me because it was the time that I left academia to pursue a creative passion, and I hardly told anyone about it. I didn't even tell you about it, like, officially until now, because a part of me just felt really ashamed of it. Realistically, I just couldn't do both, and reflecting on that time, I was just so academically burnt out from doing my last year of university during lockdown, like writing a whole dissertation during lockdown, and creating content became a remedy to that, a creative hobby that has now become my creative job. You see where I'm going with this. Because you see, despite having a great year on paper and film, making so many memories with people, and wishing I had used my Instax camera more, like, oh my god, the amount of times I brought this somewhere and I forgot to use it, if I had a nickel for every single time that happened, I'd have about 14,000 nickels, which is a lot. And it's a lot. So yeah, that's one of my resolutions for 2024, straight out the bat. Use this more. I wasn't challenging myself with anything and I wasn't growing creatively. Instead, I was pressuring myself to post anything, but also trying to hold myself to that perfect standard, which is really hard when you think about it. And because of that, I found myself relying on what I knew instead of trying to improve my craft. And because of that, I couldn't really work on any new ideas that excited me because I just didn't think I could do them. I tried to introduce new hobbies into my life to replace the one that now has become my job, such as building a mechanical keyboard. But throughout last year, I was just so overwhelmed by everything that those boxes still remain open today. My office, which throughout the course of over a year, I've spent many hours decorating and getting into a shape, has now become a cluttered mess, or in my own words, a physical manifestation of what my mind currently is. I've spent hours doom scrolling on social media to pass the time and not thinking about what stories I wanted to tell, I'd essentially plateaued my creativity and that has affected me massively. At the end of 2023, I knew something had to change. I wanted to feel creatively challenged, to love the process of bringing ideas to life, to be inspired to tell new stories. And during this process, part of the antidote had arrived at my doorstep, Hello, quite day. literally. Interestingly, I find that it's times like these that I'll always find the right book to guide me in the right direction. I picked up The Creative Act by Rick Rubin after seeing another YouTuber in a completely different like content space than I am talking about it. They mentioned how it helped them reframe how they perceive creativity and help them develop a new creative process. As someone who definitely needs a lot of help in that department, I thought that this book would be the perfect book to start the year off with. Also, I just realized that despite bringing down a bookmark for this book, it actually has a ribbon bookmark inside the book. I always do that. And The Creative Act was just such a thought-provoking read, and I'm not a massive non-fiction reader, but I definitely think that not only did this book help me tackle some things I've been having issues with creatively, but also reinforce some things that I actually want to do. I definitely would say though that if after this video you want to read this, I would highly recommend going for the audiobook as opposed to the physical, because I definitely feel like the audiobook reads more like a podcast, and I feel like the information is easily digestible if you take it as like bite-sized snippets each and every chapter. But 
But I did want to tell you about some of the things that I did take away from reading this book. Creativity is a fundamental aspect of being human. At a fundamental level, I am a creative first and foremost. It's at my core and I don't think I could ever stop being creative. Reflecting on the past year, I want to be more creative as it's important to me to constantly challenge myself in order to grow my creative boundaries and also refine myself as a creative instrument because no matter what tools you use to create, the true instrument is you. I mean, it's a definitive fact that I'm the one creating the videos, writing the stories and doing other forms of creativity. And I think at some point last year, I lost sight of that. I forgot that I was an artist, a creative, and I think that's where a lot of my issues began to stem from. Ironically, despite my main focus being about sharing stories and defining great narratives, I'd forgotten to tell my own story. In reality, I think I've changed a lot over the past year and I've grown in a lot of ways and I feel like I haven't documented much of that. And whilst in some places it might be easier for me to do the content that I did when I started this channel, that person isn't who I am anymore. And some of the content I made back then isn't the kind of content that I'd want to make now and I've learned to be okay with that. Change is inevitable and it's something that I'm welcoming as even if the world outside were to remain static, the information we took in would still be ever-changing and so too would the work we bring forth. We're all affected by our surroundings and finding the best environment to create a clear channel is personal and to be tested. This lesson purely exists to call myself out as I'm sat in front of many a pile of books that I have been either too lazy to put away or I've just stacked up because I'll sort it out later. My office is a bit of a mess and as most of you know I have ADHD and part of that for me is that I cannot work in a messy environment like my brain just gets really cluttered and like I just can't process anything and so right now this does not work for me and so one of the major things that I need to do over the next couple of weeks is actually just sort this out get the books like sorted into shelves like I, I literally have empty shelves here that I've just stuffed with like crap um, that I need to like take out but I actually have shelves to like move some of these books into and I have a kind of idea of how I want to reorganize these shelves um, so I have my arcs from last year it's very much gonna be a whole process but um, I've been working on this office for like over a year now and it's still not where I want it to be and I've been filming an office redecoration video for over a year now which is crazy to think about I think by the end of March it will finally be done and where I want it to be. So, nevertheless, we persist. So I am a perfectionist, which can be great in some scenarios, but I think for me it's bad in most of them. Is that frame right? Yeah, no, 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 it's fine. Okay, cool. I just held myself back so much from creating certain types of content in 2023 because I didn't think that I had the skills or the know-how to execute them to the standard that I wanted. I mean, I even held back from creating short form until like last year because I didn't really feel like I was able to do it. Turns out I'm really good at it. And now I'm just tired of always feeling like I'm never gonna be able to execute any of my visions because the imperfections are what makes each of us and our work interesting. Oscar Wilde said that some things are too important to be taken seriously. Art is one of those things. Setting the bar low, especially to get started, frees you to play, explore, and test without attachment to results. And like going off of that, I want to be able to play and experiment a bit more, to let my imagination run wild and bring forth something I've never conceived before, like with this video. But I also need to learn when to let go of a project, to know when it's good enough for other people to see and just to be happy with the result. I want to produce works that show a reflection of myself at that time and be able to release it when I'm happy with it. And when there's nothing more that I need to add, more specifically, because Despite our insecurities, the more times we can bring ourselves to release our work, the less weight insecurity has. I want to love creating again, love the feeling of a new idea springing to life and nurturing it into something that I can be proud of. This year, I'm striving to only do projects that I enjoy and ideas that truly excite me. I want to make content that I love and stop putting so much priority on views, likes and other metrics because they typically get in the way of things that I want to create. Truthfully, it's time for me to just let go of the stress of the algorithm and just create as with each chapter we make, we gain experience, improve our craft and inch closer to who we are. So now that I've finished this book, what's next? 
So I think one of the main things that this book reinforced was the importance of learning. Honestly, I've become so tired of being stagnant by just sticking to what I know because it's good enough and I want to change that. So this year, I really want to challenge myself creatively. I really want to push myself to learn new techniques that will help me improve my craft. I want to be able to create amazing videos, amazing stories, and amazing projects and whatever I set my mind to. The one place that I like to go to is Skillshare, the largest online learning community for creatives and a great place to pick up new hobbies or skills in 2024. If you don't know where to start, Skillshare has designed learning paths in a wide variety of categories for you to choose from, which will help you begin your learning journey. I've just finished the learning path, Develop Memorable Fictional Characters, which aids in developing fictional characters that people will care for and eventually cry about when you kill them. Next though, I think I'm going to try a new hobby and perhaps try to take my knitting to the next level, which would be level one, because I've never knitted before, but I've seen so many people post their knitting and crocheting creations that I've become inspired. Inspired. Additionally, I think the Learning Path Creative Productivity Kickstart and Sustain Any Project will aid me in overcoming my creative anxiety so that I can become more confident in pursuing any new ideas that I have and in combination with some filmmaking classes that I want to take, become better at what I do. As a neurodivergent who loves learning but also has godly amounts of hyperfixations, I just love how Skillshare provides the creative process and the technical know-how in an easily digestible format on multiple devices. So walk through the door of opportunity and see where your creativity takes you, with the first 500 people to use the link in my description, earning a one month free trial of Skillshare. And a massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video and helping all of us discover new creative pursuits in 2024. You want out? You gonna come up? Hi! Oh! Hello. I want to take a small while to reinforce the importance of having hobbies in your life. On the journey of rediscovering my creativity, I was reminded to refill the creative well. To have things that inspire me, but also things to give me a break from my creative endeavours so that I don't burn out. It's what helped me come to the realisation that I actually like making content about all of my hobbies and not just one, because I feel like then I'm at less of a risk of burnout. Plus, it won't feel like I have to hide all of my other hobbies from you all because I'm not only just a reader. As such, I thought I'd take the time now to reintroduce myself and all of the hobbies that I love to do and I'd love for you to do the exact same thing in the comment section down below. So hello, my name is Joel, otherwise known as Fictional Fates, and I'm your cozy curator of stories and awesome things, and I have a lot of hobbies. Obviously, I'm gonna have to mention reading as my first hobby, as it's the one that consistently comes back time and time again. I just absolutely love reading books, it's always the thing that gives me that adventure into other worlds, and there's always gonna be a book that I'm gonna wanna read, and just seeing them on all of my shelves is just such a beautiful sight to see, because it makes me feel like I'm a multi-dimensional explorer with a bunch of portals into other worlds. Here's one. <laughs> I'm soon going to be delving into Legendborn by Tracy Dion as part of the Book Explorers Tavern, my book club over on Discord and Fable, link below. I'm super excited to read this book because it's Arthurian legend mixed with a black protagonist, and it definitely feels like a book right up my street. I mean, all of you have recommended this book time and time again to me, and every time I say I haven't read it, there's always one person that literally dies inside, and I can't wait to see what stories and worlds I'll read throughout this year, and I feel like it's just going to be so much fun. So aside from reading, writing has been a huge part of my life ever since I was like the age of 13 where I randomly decided to enter NaNoWriMo for the very first time and won. I often think about that time and one knows how I didn't realize I was ADHD back then but also two why I was able to write so much during that period and I think it's mostly been because I was then writing only for myself because I wasn't really dreaming of getting my books published I was dreaming of writing them. I think this year I'm focusing more so on writing for myself again. Years later from finishing my first NaNoWriMo I go on to write various stories about The Sims that I played, various bits of fan fiction, and now though, I'm writing my own novels. My current work in progress is the same one that I've been working on for almost three years now, which now that I'm thinking about it, it is easy to despair upon it, but the book that it was in 2021 versus the book that it is now in 2024, hugely different. I want to query my gothic dark academia novel, Watches Burn, Watches Break this year, following four Welsh students as they uncover a deadly conspiracy after inadvertently summoning a vengeful ghost. I, I, I can't speak any more about it because I will go into spoilers for my own book and I know that's not good. I'm just really excited to finally have Wob Wob like written and finished this year and just get it out there. Like that is my main goal for like writing this year is to get that book out there. I also kind of want to draft another book potentially, but it's safe to say that I won't be running out of ideas anytime soon because I think I have a gift to always find a story to tell and it's something that 
I'm going to be cherishing for many, many years to come. A hobby I've also been getting back into is video gaming. Whilst I love reading, it isn't the only way to experience a story, and diversifying how I take in stories really does help combat that ever-creeping reading slump. Some of my fondest memories were of games that I played as a kid, like I remember buying The Sims 2 with my siblings and playing Tomb Raider for the first time, and now I'm able to create more modern day memories with modern day games. I do want to start streaming on Twitch this year so I can share the experience of playing through a story with all of you, or creating our own stories if there isn't one. I feel like it's a way both to share more of myself with you all, and also feed into the chaos that crops up in every single video that I make. For what I'm currently playing, I have three games that I'm going between at the minute. Overwatch 2 has recently kicked off season 9 and its cosmic horror theme is right up my alley. The new co-op mission is pretty awesome, and since I'm a life weaver healer main, the biblically accurate angel skin is my favourite. Plus, I want to end the tale of Eldritch Nightmare, so I have a lot of work to do. For my MMO, Elder Scrolls Online remains the game I've been playing on and off since it first launched. It's crazy to see how much this game has changed over the last 10 years I've played it, and as a fan of the Elder Scrolls franchise as a whole, I'm really excited to see how this story is going to unfold in this year's updates. This is also a game I get to play with my partner and some of my friends, so it holds a special place in my heart. And speaking of games from my childhood, Lara Croft Tomb Raider Remastered was recently released least, remastering the first three games. Tomb Raider was one of the very first games that got me into gaming, and Lara Croft was a character that I felt deeply in love with. Just seeing her explore and unearth mythologies and mysteries was just so fascinating to play through and watch, and I'm just loving how these remasters have brought the first three stories to new audiences. And I love playing other games as well, like The Sims, Dragon Age, Baldur's Gate, etc, and I just love playing a wide variety of games, and I don't think that's surprising whatsoever given the diverse range of books that I read. I just love exploring what different genres of games has to offer, and it's always just such a special experience to get to play a game for the very first time. So something that's been brewing in the background before I even had this channel was the fact that I wanted to build my own gaming PC. Ever since discovering that it was possible around about the age of 18, I knew that I was going to build one someday. I have literally watched so many PC building videos, the process of building a PC has been ingrained into my memory, but I just find it so fascinating fascinating watching all of these people put together like an intricate jigsaw puzzle. But you know, between not having enough money and the curse of like, you know, wanting to build something and then parts being constantly updated with new things that release, it just didn't seem like it was going to be possible. <laughs> that was until the beginning of this year where I basically just decided to take the plunge and just buy all of my PC parts because one, want to start streaming, but also two, I just couldn't afford to wait anymore. And now that I do finally have all of my parts, I'm just super excited to finally get building once I've cleaned my office, and finally being able to achieve one of the desires that I have from like six years ago really makes me feel like I've achieved something. Additionally, something else that I've been wanting to build as well is my very own mechanical keyboard. And I don't have just one to build, I have two! One is for my Mac setup, and the other will be my gaming keyboard. I'm just really excited about making videos of my experiences both building my PC and also building my keyboards, as I'd love for someone to watch my videos and be inspired to build their own keyboard or PC just as I've been been inspired by other people's videos. So those are currently my main hobbies that I've got going on at the moment, but there are definitely some smaller hobbies that are brewing in the background. And this is completely because my neurodivergent self loves to hyperfixate on new interesting hobbies with a furious passion. And so like I mentioned earlier, I'd love to learn how to knit or crochet this year as I'd love to make my own jumpers, tote bags, or just something. Like those squares that people are like starting off with, although I heard those squares aren't good for like neurodivergent ADHD people, so we'll just just see what happens with that. I also want to learn how to rebind books, because I've seen people do it on Instagram, and after taking one single bookbinding class, I believe I can do anything the bookbinding has to- no, I, I, I can't even lie. I know I'm gonna fail somewhat, but like, failing is fun. So I'm just excited to see like the rebinding process and how well or not well it's gonna go for me. I also want to start reviewing movies and TV shows on Letterboxd because I just want to be able to look back and see what films and TV shows I've watched and like my thoughts on them and my feelings and a lot of my friends are doing it and I feel like it's time I do it as well. Oh yeah, I'm also like obsessed with skincare and I'd love to get back into having a proper routine because it kind of like truly dropped off at the end of 2023 and I just love to get back into it and like get my skin 
into where it needs to be because right now it's doing okay, but I know it could do like a lot better. All of this is to say, in the way that I'm approaching creativity in 2024, I don't think I can necessarily call myself a booktuber or a bookish content creator anymore because after being described as such for so long, I felt like I was being pushed into a mold that I no longer really fit. So I'm just gonna do something different. Taking a leaf out of the creative act, I decided to look for inspiration from a variety of places, and I came across creators on YouTube who create videos in a cinematic style that I fell in love with. Now, I'm not someone who studied filmmaking, but it was the way these creators craft a story with each video that made me want to make videos like that. It did lead me down a huge rabbit hole of learning how they made their videos, learning new skills of filming and editing, taking more care into the production process, and challenging myself to create something different. As such, I made the decision to make some upgrades to my filming gear to fix issues I've been dealing with for quite some time. Firstly, I invested in a new lens because whilst I love my kit lens that came with my Canon R50, it does not do great in low light situations like cloudy days in this office. I invested in a new Sigma lens which has an f-stop of 1.8, which means I'm now able to film at most times of the day as I'm able to achieve brighter environments when I need to without sacrificing the quality of the video and the difference it makes in my production process is I, I have no words for how life-changing this lens has been for me. From Earth, I purchased a mount adapter for the lens so it would fit on my camera, ethereal mist filter which will help bloom the lights so everything feels more ethereal, and then I purchased the Digimic because whilst I love my Rode Smart Lab microphone, the wire is annoying and sometimes it wouldn't be fully connected and then I wouldn't notice until after I've done filming and then I'd have to refilm the entire thing again. Everything you're seeing here has been used in producing this video and I can definitely say it has increased my production quality by a huge amount and it's just made the filming experience like 10 times more pleasurable to film and it's just so much easier to film in places. I, I absolutely love it, like I feel much more motivated to film now because I don't have to worry about it being too dark to film and all of this was exactly what I needed to feel passionate about creating again. To have that feeling of challenging myself to create something new. So what is the plan? How am I going to be creative whilst not letting my perfectionism get in the way? The answer is a challenge. Inspired by a new content creator I've been watching Life of Riza, I'm going to challenge myself to just upload a video every week. It could be a long video, it could be a short video, it could be an elaborate video with many weeks of planning involved, or it could literally just be a video of me going to a farmer's market and going book shopping. The aim is just to create consistently whilst also not letting myself mull over an idea or a video for too long. I want to stop perfectionism from taking hold and just letting myself be happy with what I'm creating. I do have some ideas of what I want my next few videos to be and I'm super excited to approach my content creation process this way. Essentially this entire video was just to say that I'm sorry that I haven't been around as much but with the help of my first read of 2024, watching other creators and just some introspection, I learned that I'm the writer of my own story and it's time for me to tell it in the way that I want. To romanticize my life a bit more and showing the small nuggets of the everyday that bring me joy, to take you along with it and show myself as the main character of the story that I want to tell. Thank you so much for watching today's video besties, I know it's a bit of a different one but I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, I firstly love the fact that you're, this is the first video that you're watching but also perhaps subscribe so you can see what videos I produce next and if you wanted to share this video, be sure to tag me because I'd love to see all of you talk about it on like Instagram stories, on X formerly known as Twitter and any other social media platforms, heck even on the Discord as well. I'm also highly anticipating all of your introductions in the comment section down below, do not think that I have forgotten. Be sure to check out the other links in my description down below including my other socials, my discord server and my book club to meet more people in our awesome community. And I promise next week I will reorganize this bookshelf and finally start tidying this office up because I want to build that gaming PC and I can't do that until all of this is sorted. So until the next time, bye besties.